I'd like to share with you this afternoon our success story on our digital journey uh, in the SEC and the challenges we faced along the way. So hopefully this will help you, especially our aspiring entrepreneurs and fellow innovators with insights and motivation when you pursue your own digital transformation. Now, sometime in, uh, actually in late 2017 through 2018, the SEC had an earlier attempt at automation of its registration process. And in this first attempt, the SEC developed the Company Registration System, or the CRS. Indeed, new company applicants were able to submit their requirements uh, using computers with the hope to make the process even more efficient. However, it was not very successful. There was a public outcry on the slow registration process. In fact, an, a congressional in inquiry was then initiated. So at that time, incorporating a new company took two to eight months for the application to be processed. Or the application simply vanished into the kalawakan. That's what they call Nawawala. Uh, so what's ironic is that it was slower than when we were doing it manually. So I was there as an appointed commissioner in 2017. And when I interviewed our clients, they said, Com, pwede ba IBM na lang tayo? It's better manual. So what ended up happening is that there was a big gap between the procurement process and its implementation. Try to imagine 2012 specifications implemented in 2017. So five years later. So as a result, the SEC had dated technology and the system could not perform the task demanded of it by the time it was fully operational. So further, there was some aversion uh, against iCloud technology for fear of hacking and all. So later, when I became chair, um, of course, before we shifted to iCloud, my commissioners and I had to contribute. No? Ambag-ambagan muna kami for the purchase of additional storage and servers because they were very quick to fill up uh, at walang budget. There's no budget for their immediate purchase then. You know, you have to pass through some bidding processes. Although, outrightly, we wanted I iCloud to, to be utilized. So further, the public's experience of the CRS somehow reinforced the resistance to transacting online because to them, automation meant delays and inconvenience. Now, actually, day two, our external clients have their constraints. They're mostly technologically challenged. So a liaison officer of a law firm told me, you know, Dati naman, I just have to get the manual documents and then present it to the SEC. They do the actual processing and review. We do the corrections, if any. Then a certificate will be issued. E ngayon kasi, hindi na po pwede. When you go to the SEC, everything has to be done online. I mean, back then. No? Uh, kaya... This time, she is asked to do the encoding, and she's not trained to do that. So she's always at a loss. She doesn't know how to go through the online process, and so stressed. So that every day, the commission would receive calls, comments from the transacting public requesting and demanding return to manual processing. Now, because of this, morale in the commission was very low. Our CRMD, that's the Company Registration Monitoring Department, it was like the hell's kitchen of Gordon Ramsay. You find people crying, shouting at one another, of course, between our staff and our clients, and our ICTD, okay, which is supposed to be the support department on, on that regard, was simply not around. And depended on the vendor okay, of the CRS. So, of course, uh, it was around then that I assumed the chairmanship of the SEC. This was mid-2018. 
and I have to effect leadership change in ICTD. So despite these difficult circumstances, I stayed focused to the vision of pursuing the Commission's digital transformation for better ways to serve the public. Now, I told Commissioner J.B. Francisco, who like me rose through the ranks, press kami, no? uh, started it, uh, SEC. I told him, J.B., let's put our money where our mouth is, okay, or are. So we claim, tayo, sec insiders tayo, we can do a better job than any of those outsiders who are placed in the commission. Um, and it's time for us to prove it because we're supposed to know the, the registration process by heart. Okay? Now we felt that it was simply not done the right way. And so what we did was to come up immediately with palliative, let me say, palliative solutions like the pass lane and the pass truck kiosk, which while we were looking, we were bid for time to come up with critical and breakthrough solutions for the you know, rather huge, huge mess made by CRS. So we have to make it work knowing full well the value of digitally transforming the SEC. It will be so much easier with no room for corruption and to digitally capture. Importante kasi yung digital capture of corporate data. Uh, instead of maintaining a mountainous file of you know, hard copies, which are not even organized, so it's very hard to retrieve. So besides, there was nowhere to go but digital, the world will soon be taken over by generations like Gen Z and all who grew up you know, with digital technologies. So I told my staff, guys, digital transformation route is one investment decision we cannot afford not to have in order for us to stay in the race. Okay, so next slide, please. Hitting the ground running in 2018, I helped shepherd the passage of the revised corporation code, which was finally enacted in 2019. This landmark legislation pushed for ease of doing business, good corporate governance, the uh, increased enforcement and prosecutorial powers of the SEC and its fiscal autonomy to pursue its modernization and digitalization trust. So with, with its new fiscal autonomy, we bought ourselves our permanent home in Makati while investing heavily in digital initiatives. Now armed with the funding source, next slide please. For our operations and modernization, I directed the crafting of our SEC Super Vision 2028. At that time, 2025. We just expanded it to 2028. It involves digital transformation as a vital component in ensuring that the Commission is able to fulfill its mandate as the overseer of the corporate sector, securities markets, and a champion of the investing public. So we have since transformed SEC from an almost exclusively manual process to our flowed online registration system, then to our, I say, world-class in-house, in-house developed digital process and beyond. It has been calibrated and tempered to meet the requirements of the transacting public, so meaning customer-centric, of course, and our other stakeholders, and not just adapting technology for its own sake. So just before the pandemic, which caused the lockdowns and the travel restrictions, we were able to get our present ICTD director. I will not mention his name, but he might get pirated. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And his equally marvelous team of IT experts. Marami din sila. So the pandemic actually provided us the needed time, you know, uh, that's a year, at least a year, to put up our digital initiatives in place. And it supported online transactions with people avoiding face-to-face -face, uh, interactions. So dati, manual na sir, pupunta kami dyan. E ngayon, nobody wants to, you know, face each other. So it actually served as a golden opportunity for us to accelerate our digital transformation journey with easier or less 
resistance. So, uh, our supervision 2028 entails the automation of 28, next slide please, 28 key processes and the creation of a harmonized and integrated database under a digital transformation and technology modernization roadmap. The first part of the roadmap mainly focuses on digitalizing and streamlining our internal systems and direct interfaces with our pilers and the transacting public. Next slide, please. To date, we have successfully brought online our core initiatives that were rolled out between 2020 and 2022, so definitely during the pandemic period, and includes our electronic registration, filing, and payment systems. So to include the electronic simplified processing of application for registration of companies, which we call SPARC, and its subsystem, the one-day submission and electronic registration of companies, or one sec. Then we have the electronic filing and submission tool, which we call as the EFAS, and the electronic system for payments to SEC, SpaceX. So this is Elon Musk uh, inspired. His is SpaceX, right? <laughs> so in April 2021, we started offering a faster and easier company registration process to Spark. This replaced the problematic CRS system. It allows users to apply for registration of corporations through modern and highly accessible web browsers with an in-house database, increasing efficiency and accuracy of information. Further accelerating the company registration process is one sec which we, we, we would use for applications for registration. Ito consider to pass-through pass system, no? Because we had, we analyzed the, the nature of all the applications. At least 36, 37% of these registrations, yung mga could be templated, no? You simply have to check the purpose clause, the, the uh, uh, authorized capital stock, and uh, of course, there's is already a, a templated purpose if you do that, we will allow the actual name verification to processing to actual payment and the release of a digital certificate without you having to see any of our staff. So the red red of pass through or straight through system sha. Now in 2022, Spark was fully integrated in the Philippine the Business Hub which is the national government's centralized platform for business registration and related transactions, such as applications for registration with the BIR, SSS, Pagibig, and PhilHealth. Okay. Now, after the launch of Spark and OneSec, there had been an increase of 67% in the number of new registrations in 2021, while we were still in the middle of the pandemic. It further grew by 13% more in 2022. Records show that there has been an increase to 42,926 companies registered in that year alone. Okay. As of October 2023, 10 months into 2023, we broke the record with 42,957 companies registered at 17% year-on-year increase. Now, we are expecting to hit 50,000 companies registered by year end. And uh, we saw a record time, my record time ano, huh? uh, using one sec. It only took a minute and 14 seconds to complete the company registration. Proof of the speed and the ease of which the system can be used. Now, launched earlier in March 2021, the SpaceX allows for the payment of registration fees, transaction fees, and penalties online using debit cards, credit cards, digital wallets, and other cashless payment options to complete their transaction. Now linked to Spark and OneSec, it allows for end-to-end -end seamless digital transactions. Please note, all payments to SEC are done online. We even took out our cashiering system, and we have to retool our cashier to do other things. 
not just in the main office, up to our extension offices. Because they will have to course it through the bank, do online, and of course through our online portals. So we launched EPAS around the same time as SpaceX in March 2021. EFAS, on the other hand, because after you create your company, you still have to make a submission of your audited financial statements and the general information sheet. So uh, this time, you could do the online submission. So with this portal, uh, digital portal, corporations and their authorized filers only need to undergo one-time enrollment process to submit their reports moving forward. So you could do it at the comforts of your home or your office. So the shift aligns with the government zero conta uh, contact and automation policy to eliminate red tape and thereby improve the ease of doing business. And it is also in line with the sustainability goals of the SEC as it eliminates the use of tons and tons of paper products. Next slide, please. So. Um, online submissions of the GIS, as you will see in the, in the screen, and the financial statements have increased at 17% and 21% respectively for this year, showing that our entrepreneurs now are mindful in the preparation of their financial statements and reportorial compliance to SEC. And in fact, uh, we regularly get uh, requests from other government agencies, including Congress, uh, where they would request for the soft financial data from SEC. And we can readily give them within, okay, I have five minutes, <laughs> within, the, um, within 24 hours precisely because everything is already digitally captured. Okay, let me just go fast. So on June 22, 2023, we celebrated the 85th anniversary of the SEC, you know, sabi ko, 85 as company registrar, and no less than President Ferdinand R. Mar Marcos Jr. launched the second wave of our digital initiatives. We did launch five, and let me just probably run through lang. The Electronic Sec Universal Registration Environment, or eSecure. The Sec Check Up 2.0 for public inquiry, uh, inquiry of uh, SEC-related information on the go, on the fly, 24-7 accessibility. Then we have the electronic SEC Education Analysis uh, Research Computing Hub or eSearch for transacting the public's purchase and download of submitted documents to the SEC. We have the SEC API Marketplace and the eRAMP, the Electronic Registration Application for Market Participants. In fact, the President did say the time that is calling on the SEC to make use of all the successes to promote ease of doing business and to actively contribute to the overall goal of bringing comfortable life to our people. So, very quickly, the SEC story is not unique because it is reported that 70% of digital transformations were failures, okay? Too broad, not defined, simply Simply missing, new strategy. So, and of course, no alignment within the organization. And that's what happened to us. What brought about was the resistance between the external and the internal uh, stakeholders. So, naka problema. And then that required upskilling first of our people. Okay. On the other hand, for our external uh, customers, we have to provide for adequate transition and to, well, allow, allow us to listen to and engage with our clients and tell them the merits of going or being digital. Okay, and then what worked was we were able to tap a network, our SEC, uh, you, you move forward, yes. You slide po, yeah, yeah. So that's what we're trying to explain to them because I have only less than five minutes and it's almost time is up. So, uh, so what we're moving is not just to implement a zero contact as a policy, but towards zero manual intervention for real time transactions. Of course, we know we are in the right direction. So far we have earned recognition, can you move forward, from different organizations here and abroad 
for promoting sustainability, good governance, and ease of doing business with digital transformation, powering our initiatives in all these areas. The One of the photos there would show a month ago, we were in Malta, and this came from the Corporate Registers Forum, which is our international organization of business registers, acknowledging that uh, our SPARC, no, our, one of our projects, has won the Innovation Award. Okay, let me just finish. Uh, as I said, the end of our journey is not so much about achieving zero face-to-face -face transaction environment or shifting all our services online. Rather, it is about harnessing technology uh, to propel to propel the business sector and the capital markets to become key drivers of the country's economic recovery and growth. So it's not about ourselves. It's about the people we serve. So rest assured, your sex stands with you as you constantly adopt innovative technologies and undertake digital initiatives to provide a better future for Filipinos. So let me end with these following quotations. Filipino vision spurs our Filipino nation. And finally, it's easy at SEC. Thank you and mabuhay. The process of innovation within the what are the key insights you gain working with the within with working within the public sector that maybe we can reapply for our own uh, businesses? Yeah, precisely. I was sharing uh, just because you know our storage spaces would run short all the time. And we, you know, in, in government, you have to undergo bidding processes. Mahirap yun. You cannot oh. just acquire. We, unlike in, 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 in the private sector, you can do that immediately. So, ang nangyayari, ambag-ambag kami. So, it's out from the pocket. Literally, and out, it, of your own, out of your own pocket? Yes, to save ourselves from embarrassment. Because our system would lag. So, first thing, sabi nga nila in, the, in uh, change management, there are four things you need to consider. Mm -hmm. The first being is a sponsor. It's important that you may have a sponsor for your resources. That's why passing the revised corporation code, which provided us the, the fiscal autonomy, was a linchpin for all this. So we were allowed now. We have sufficient resources to push for digital transformation. Of course, we have to deal with the other three. That's resistance, mm -hmm. which happened to us, the culture fit, mm -hmm. and of course, transition, which we have to provide adequately, and which we did actually. That's right. And now, moving a bit more to the process of innovation, which I wanted to ask. Yes. Actually, if, if you look again at the four-step process that Josiah was talking about, in terms of innovation, he talked about assessing, uh, asking the right questions or assessing the, uh, or challenging assumptions, right? Followed yes. by identifying the pain point and then finally yes. ideating on the solution. Finally, maybe changing the business model. You were able to identify the pain point, but the problem here is that to implement your solution, and I mean, I mean, there's so much institutional barriers. That's Help correct. us better appreciate um, how you were able to, uh, what, what the best, I mean, for you, coming, your lessons coming out of this one, how were you able to address institutional barriers to make sure that you could push through with the innovation? Because there's a process, eh? Yes, of course, I, as I said, first, it's important that you have the resources, uh, which the private sector enjoys that flexibility. On the other hand, our problem was our people, both sides. I mean, our clients who were, not, were technologically challenged on one hand and found it very rather difficult to accept the, the change. And then on the other hand, our own people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they were not really on board. So what we did was to put up the Supervision 2025, now 2028. The intention is that from the commissioners down to the rank and file, we were all on board. We made sure that they understand what we're doing, what we intend to do, and how we could effectively elevate our roles in the commission. Mm -hmm. That is as far as our, our uh, employees are concerned. On the other hand, of course, I'll grant them ownership as well to the digital transformation uh, or initiatives that we have accomplished. On the other hand, our clients kailangan alalay we have to put up a uh, help desk and, in fact, webinars to be able to educate them on how to, you know, deal with this, uh, the nitty-gritty of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, digital transformation. In, in fact, yung ating, ano, we resorted to the networking strategy. We had the campaign network, uh, which is a network of public and private institutions. 
So where we were able to tap their resources, their own beneficiaries. So we have joint uh, webinars. So our reach used to be just a couple of hundred, so mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. 200. Now we have a reach of over 5 million. Mm. So importante. So two things, it has to be customer centric. You have to look at the demands of your client, both sides, internal, external, and consider public-private uh, partnerships. And, and as I look at it, it seems to echo the same theme across uh, our previous speakers, that it's not only the product innovation that's important, but also the, yeah. I guess, the social engineering component that's important as well, meaning that it's yes. just it's the conversion of people to appreciate and to learn more about this, this app is good for me, this, right. this improvement is good for me, and to get their buy-in. Yeah, it, it's not about just technology purely. It's still people, you know, who runs the technology that has to be, you know, uh, with you in, 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 in the transformation. And the people who accept the technology, who, exactly. who have to use the technology at the same yes, time, right? That's right. I, I have a question. When you were implementing the changes in SEC, and usually in the tech startup community, they often have what they call the MVP or the minimum viable product, or mm -hmm. at least a pilot test. Was that also being yes. done? Because... Uh, kumbaga, you all, lahat kayo nag-abag-abag para makuha yung, yung technology. Did, yes. you, did you run it out uh, all at once or did you, did you have a pilot before scaling it out to the rest of the, uh, the organization? After we learned the hard way, we are uh, first wave actually. Uh, this time we, we did it right. So may alpha, may beta testing. Be before we, you know, farm it out and, and, and deploy it to for use of our clients. Got that. It, you said that there was an, an initial wave of you doing it when you started off. It right. failed, and you started off again now. If you were to identify the key things that you, you, we need to, you know, what could, have done, what could have been done better? What could that have been to improve the innovation process or the speed up the process of acceptance? Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, we were operating under... A lot of constraints because we were with government at that time with limited resources. So even when, when the, we started, we did launch first, as I said, it's a data technology. You launch it in 2017, although the specs was 2012. Mm -hmm. You try to imagine that. Ang daming PDFs. And then, you know, they eat up your storage. Eh? That's why yung, we end up uh, contributing. Only because, not because we wanted it, but it was to save face. Because we cannot tell our people, sorry, uh, na, ano na, uh, overload puno na. Puno na yung ating <laughs> server. So we end up really having to you know, shell out our own funds to be able just to make the system work. But everything changed uh, after we were able to get our fiscal autonomy. We have access to funds. And, and then we were able to, under a joint circular with the DBM, we were able to work. May mga parameters. And so long as we... We do all the procurement within those parameters. We're okay, so we were able to move, move faster. I've got I've got two more questions. I think they're very relevant to the to our uh, audience here as well. I saw that innovation has been working for you, and you were able to break it up into several fields of identifying for digital transformation. This is the first wave, second wave, I guess even third wave. Yes. Uh, can you help us better appreciate? At least in your mind, no. Mm. When you, when innovation is there, then you have to break it up. Which do you? How do you tackle digital transformation? How do you know which is the first, second, third part to prioritize when you start going? Because it, it can be such a daunting task, eh, right? Right, 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 right. Probably the first. Actually, it's not the first. It was our first attempt because mm -hmm. it failed miserably the first time. Tuition money po yun. Don't have it. Tuition yan. Tuition yeah. yeah. Nala natuto kami sa mali namin, and then we started addressing it. So what needs to be done? We have to make sure everyone is on board. It cannot be just top money. So pinaka, pinaka everybody yeah. had to be on board. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Okay. Because there was, I, I think, the, those the, that's what's the most significant. Because we, we felt, as I said, I went to CRMD. They were like killing each other there. And yet the supporting department was, was telling me, come, magalas cuatro na, I need to go home. So you try to imagine walang support yung ICTD to CRMD, the user of, of the of the application. Oh, oh, oh. So, we were simply uh, daming, uh, no, disconnect. So, but from that experience, when I became chairman, oh. said, oh, let's, this is what we have to do. We planned it out. We came up with a digital transformation and technology modernization roadmap. Identified the different key components that we need to do and then launch them according to plan. 
I see, I yes, see, sir. Yes. And the final question, I think, is also very key for many of us. You know what? You're the first awardee from the public sector. Yes. And of course, one more Thank round you. of applause, please, because I think it's very deserving. Salamat. <laughs> oh, we're, we're, we're very thankful, along with our yeah. friends from the NGO, the first aid fee was the, is the first also NGO. Yes. And I think this is a unique opportunity for us from the private sector to better understand how to engage working with public sector organizations. Baka you could share with us just some great public, uh, some best practices for us to engage so that uh -huh. we can also help uh, improve our ability. Because, you know, for many of us, it's, it's, I hope you understand, pain point rin yan to interact with the government. Eh, right, right. Maybe you can share with us best practices for us to also improve uh, our ability to innovate working with the government. Uh, probably what I could share is that, of course, when you're in government, you seem, you're simply jealous of what the private sec sector can do with all the leeway diba, na nagagawa immediately. Unlike us, and daming constraints. So, uh, I think what's important also, let's say for those in government, it, the, the, uh, it, it should come very from the top. No? Yung, yung uh, digital mindset should come from the top management, no less. And we, as, as the leaders in, in like SEC, should have a skin on the game. Huh? Mm -hmm. Kailangan, we have to be, have a direct involvement kasi hindi siya ganun kadali. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we learn from our mistakes. So we just made sure that we will not repeat the same mistake. But uh, meaning, you still have to learn. I am a CPA and I'm a lawyer, but I have to learn so much, you know, uh, all these things about tech. Not that I need to be an expert or an IT, uh, you know, uh, guy, but uh, I, I still kept my, my, my being uh, such a CPA and a lawyer, but then I tried to learn everything there is under the itong ano natin, Web 3.0. Oh. Dapat we constantly, I get to watch the documentaries the, in YouTube, anything that, that uh, about digital transformation, because that's the only way, because uh, we cannot pretend to, to know oh, all these okay. things. Yes. And then, when we have private sector interacting with public sector, what should we what should we keep in mind so that it's a more, I guess, more efficient process that we we work together with you guys? Yeah, actually, we are encouraging a partnership with the private sector. In in fact, we had opened up uh, part of our initiatives uh, to encourage actually fintech entrepreneurs. We created a Filipino Innovation Office. No, there's a Philippine Tech Innovation Office. Purpose is to open up, allow fintech entrepreneurs to go to us. You don't go into a, some legal bind. We can we can guide you and tell you this is what you you, you can do within our regulations. I see. We advise. We we, we took it upon ourselves that dapat in this you know day and age, there's a lot of you know uh, innovations and and then of course the private sector may not understand the the regulations that we are putting up. And on, in our case, we may not understand actually the, you know, the, all this, the technical, uh, you know, uh, uh, everything that, that uh, let's say, a particular fintech may be pushing. Mm -hmm. So, but, but it is, we have a present me anything, you make a presentation before us, then we try to dissect, and we tell you, okay, puede to, you could. We can clear you. You don't have to probably register. Oh, if you need to register, you just simply have to comply with our requirements. So, nag-open up. We even have a sandbox too. Ami sandbox na kayo? Yes, oh, wow. pinapayagan din natin. So that because exactly, we want our Filipino entrepreneurs, our uh, fintech, in, mga institutions dito, to be at par and competitive. Kasi if we try to hold them back, how can they compete, especially in the global stage? That's right. That's so, right. Government has to be supportive. So at least th those are the things that, that uh, those are initiatives that we have brought about uh, and, and, and created, ito, we created innovative offices. We already, as I said, the Philippine Tech Innovation Office, that's one. We have the uh, Cybersecurity Division to ensure the safety of our, uh, of our repository mm -hmm. of data. We have the cyber crimes because there are lots of cyber crimes going as we are talking now, and and uh, we we have our oasis, the uh, office for strategic investment in SMEs to help our SMEs, as we had our created our uh, international affairs uh, and protocol division, and dami nating create the mga innovative offices to make sure that we are able to meet the demands of the private sector.
Yeah. Well, thank you so much for supporting the innovation efforts we of should. the public sector. Maraming yeah. salamat rin pala. Pakan po ulit. Sir, maraming salamat for joining us, our first ever public sector awardee. Thank you.